Hello and welcome to episode 227 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is April 8th, 2024. And today I'm wearing one of the cowls that I knit out of the book Cowl Girls by Kathy Karen. Um, I like this book a lot and some of you may recognize this hat cowl combination that you see every time in the intro to my videos. And um, I often knit things differently from the way they are written in the pattern, but both with this hat cowl combination and this cowl, I um, knit them quite close to the original. So this is what the cowl looks like in the book. And uh, this is the other picture uh, where she has it wrapped uh, over her head and I use the same color the only thing I don't have is this um, this ornament kind of thing um, yeah but uh, by using the same color it looks quite like uh, the one in the book and it's it has this bit that you can pull around and hang over your cowl but you could also pull it down and um, if you were wearing a jacket you could have sort of fill this um, so it's warm where there is no jacket. <laughs> I hope you know what I mean. And it's a fairly long cowl. So it's it's long enough to pull over your head and still have enough um, fabric around your neck. Um, yeah, and I use the uh, Opal Sock Yarn with Silk. They produced that some years ago. They didn't repeat it, so it's uh, not available anymore. But it makes the yarn a bit more luxurious than the normal sock yarn and I really liked this um, silver grey colour and I like the pattern and it's quite a nice cowl. Um, yeah and the pullover I'm wearing is of course the crochet raglan pullover whispering pines that I showed as a finished object last week and now I'm wearing it. As I said I washed it, I laid it flat to dry. I did not block it. I did not pull it in any direction. And as usual, the yarn um, after it's washed, directly after it's washed, is very um, soft and very. you can pull it in many directions. But if you leave it to dry, it will usually sort of pull back to the original size, but not completely. So usually I find that the um, knitted or crocheted items that I make they get just a little bit longer, a little looser, and that's what I expected. So, <coughs> excuse me. So now the sleeves are a perfect length. They're a bit longer than I usually make them, but that's okay. So I can move around. They're still fairly long. The length of the pullover just, yeah, it lengthened a tiny little bit, but it's a length that I really like. So it's, um, below my waist, but it's um, higher than my bottom. <laughs> anyway, it's a, it's a size I like. The neckline maybe grew a tiny little bit, but not too much. I still like the way it's higher in the back, and uh, I still think it's not too big. And I think in winter I'm going to wear like a turtleneck top underneath, or a big shawl on top of something. And for now, where it's not that cold, um, a little cowl will do. And um, yeah, so I can I can leave this hanging in the front or in the back, anywhere I like, or I could pull it through again. I think I'll pull it through again. That's the way I uh, like to wear this best. <laughs> um, yeah, so. So that's what I'm wearing today. Um, all of it is opal sock yarn, but this was the four ply with silk and the pullover is the so-called eight ply, which could either be called DK weight or maybe a light Aran weight or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I'm very happy with both of them. And that's what I'm wearing. Now on to finished objects. I have one finished object and one almost finished object and one new cast on. So not too bad. Um, I'll show you the finished object now and that's the line dance mystery knit along. And I think it's not a mystery anymore, which is why a picture of it was on the little 
picture or is going to be on the picture to uh, preview the the or to show the video I don't know how you call that picture anyway I'm going to show it to you now I think most people now know what it's what it looks like and um, I finished the clue four which was sort of knitting the same pattern in reverse order that we knit in clue three this was clue one the back has clue two and now for the last surprise that um, yeah you can see it here that was uh, part of the design is if you dropped the first four stitches or the last four stitches depending on how you look at it um, before you knit before you did the three needle bind off you could drop all those stitches and you'd have a fringed edge without having to cut your yarn without having to uh, work it in to the edge it's just there by dropping the stitches and I really like the idea I have another pattern for a um, shawl that has this worked in fringe and I always wanted to do it I never got around to doing it but now I have a cowl that has this um, knitted on fringe and it goes all round the cowl so the complete lower part so in clue two that's when we started doing the um it's like a pearl garter stitch pattern uh, followed by one stitch that was twisted and that's supposed to keep the whole thing from unraveling and um if you want it you could use your beginning and to add some more loops to the very beginning I didn't want to do that I don't mind the little gap in the loops here um, I've woven in all the ends I just haven't cut them yet because I haven't washed and blocked it yet and the thing with washing I wash everything I knit anyway because I want all the dirt that got into it while I was knitting it um, to come out of the fabric and also all the stuff that were into into the yarn by making the yarn so spinning it and dyeing it and and packing it and they, I think they put stuff in so they can keep it in storage without anything happening to it and I want to wash every all of that out before I wear something um, otherwise the cowl itself I'm not going to block in any way because I think um, it looks good the way it is but I do want to block the fringes so what you can do is you can um, leave the loops or you can cut them open and then you can leave them the way they are or you can knot them together. Now I what I want to do is I want to leave the um, loops but I, and I don't want to knot them but I want to block them to make sure they really are straight. So they are mostly straight now because I knit the stitches and then let them drop fairly quickly except for clue two which was done earlier so they are a bit more curly from being knit before um, yeah so that's the main thing in blocking this um, loop is to straighten out uh, the fringe yeah otherwise um, I've tried it on it sits differently from what I expected but I think I'll talk more about that next week when I plan to be wearing this um, yeah so that's my finished project for today then on to works in progress and um, I usually start with socks anyway but I also want to um, continue with my almost finished project and if any of you follow um, the sock madness and what's happening there they might be surprised that I'm not calling my sock madness socks finished because I have sent in the email I've put up all the pictures on Ravelry and I've actually been accepted and I have a spot for round four but I'm going to change something with the socks and that's why I'm not calling them um, a finished object here and um, so the round three sock madness socks this year are called Nupi um, and they were designed by Millie Vent or Mili Vent she's from Estonia and her um, she designs under the name Vada Kunst um, and this is what the socks look like so the interesting thing about these socks was that we needed some lace yarn so this is actually some lace yarn it looks it's, it's by Regia and it looks a bit like the hand dye effect sock yarn that they did 
quite some years ago, but they also did some lace yarn that had the same look. And this is actually the lace yarn, which has um, 600 meters to 100 grams. And, um, and the main color is opal sock yarn. So you have to have two different weights of yarn, and then you use different needles to knit the yarns. And the interesting thing is that you use the thinner needles for the sock and the bigger needles for the lace part. But um, you do that so that this is knit more loosely and the um, fabric that's underneath you. So you knit the main color first in stockinette stitch and then you add the lace yarn with the lace pattern on top and you have fewer rounds to knit with the lace pattern than you did in stockinette. But for them to be the same height, that's why you use different needles. And the effect is that you can see the fabric shining through the lace of the lace pattern. And, um, and I knit these for my sister, so I asked her if she liked these colors and she said yes. And then I knit the first sock, this one was actually the first sock, I knit that to the minimum requirement and I tried them on and they are even a bit too short for my foot. So these are definitely the shortest sock madness socks that I've ever knit to minimum requirements. So that was very interesting. I used the, the pattern called for a two millimeter needle, but I used a 2.25 millimeter needle, knowing that with the way I knit, it would have been too hard and too um, dense with the two millimeter needle and maybe not even big enough. I wasn't sure. So I used the 2.25 millimeter needle again that I used for the other um, sock madness socks and I knit to the minimum requirement and I realized it's too short. And um, so I knit the second one and I added one um, repeat of the lace pattern. So um, if you look at it, this is where this sock ends and then I added this repeat and I knit the toe that the pattern called for and I saw my sister this morning and she tried it on and the bigger one is actually perfect. So all I have to do is undo the toe of this sock, add one lace repeat, add another toe and then they will be finished. Then I'll be weaving in all the ends and then I can call them a properly finished project. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed knitting these. I love knitting lace. I'm fairly quick with lace. So um, I didn't have a big problem with the pattern. And I really, I especially like this lace pattern. So I might knit another pair of socks just with that lace pattern without the double thing up here and without these two patterns, um, just because I enjoyed it so much and I really like the look of it. Um, yeah, and otherwise, there's, there's um, oh, by the way, the pattern came out on Wednesday morning and the round is supposed to go another two weeks or is going to run for two weeks. So there's, um, there shouldn't be a new Sock Madness pattern for more than a week now. So this week I, uh, I'm hopefully going to catch up with all the projects that didn't get knit on last week. Yeah, so that was the first work in progress. Um, about the other works in progress, I did not crochet on the summer pullover. I did not knit on the dress that I'm knitting. And I didn't knit on the, sh the Stephen West shawl, the squiggle and stripe. I wanted to do that, but I forgot to bring the right color home with me. So the yarn was lying here. I couldn't knit on that. But to show you the things that I... Oh, one more thing um, that's sort of a finished object, but it doesn't have a project page and it's not a proper project but I think two weeks ago I showed you a little crochet something that I did with my eight-year-old student and she picked a new pattern for us to crochet and we crocheted this. So this looks like a beautiful rose um, but it's actually two layers of crochet so you start off by crocheting the base from the inside to the outside and then you turn the work and you start crocheting those like petals onto the base that you've crocheted and you end up in the middle again. And it's again a fairly complicated pattern. It's not a very easy one. And um, she hasn't finished hers yet. She's still, she has started crocheting back, but she maybe, I think she has like two rounds of these petals and she still needs to finish the inside. But um, just wanted to show it to you. I think it's so beautiful. I'm very happy with the color that I chose. It's again, Catania 
uh, Cotton, a pure cotton by Schachenmeier. And um, this is not something that I would put a cup on, so I will probably sew this to something just as an embellishment. Don't know yet, but just quickly to show you. Okay, then let's go on with socks. I still have the Acorn socks by Tin Can Knits on the needle out of the rustic German Westfalen Wolle yarn. And I finished the heel. So I knit the heel flap the... What's that called? Uh, the heel turn and then the gusset. I think I've just uh, finished the gusset decreases. Now I just need to knit the straight bit and the toe and then hopefully someday they will be done. <laughs> and again, that's all the socks I have on the needles. Um, then on to the double knitted cowl remember by Nathan Taylor, the sock matician. I added a couple of rounds to that. So now you can see that, that on this side, I think we've, um, completed the line of little um, flowers going towards the side that has the many, many flowers. I finished the last bit with um, more beads in the middle of the flower. And there's actually only one more beaded bit to do, and that should be in the middle of this flower. And so I'm, I'm going towards the end of the cowl and I'm really looking forward to finishing it and to wearing it. It's the Alpaca Silk Yarn by Hansa Farm. And uh, I really enjoy knitting with it. I really enjoy the pattern. And now I'm starting to looking forward to uh, finishing it and wearing it. Yeah, so I'm really happy I continued knitting on that. I'm still working with my two 50 gram balls and um, I'm still not quite sure whether they're going to be enough. And I'm still thinking if it's only like two or three rounds, I will probably not do the last couple of rounds if I can finish the thing, the cowl with this yarn then. But if not, I do have more yarn. I could use a second one. Then I added a bit to the Even Star skirt. So I'm using the pattern for the Even Star shawl. And I have a lot of stitches, so every round takes quite some time. But I've added just a few rounds, but it makes the shaping of the pattern more, more obvious now. So you can see that these stitches have grown towards each other a little more. And there are a few more stitches in between those twisted stitches growing outwards. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying, again, I'm enjoying knitting this. As I said, I love lace patterns. I love knitting lace patterns. Um, and uh, yeah, not much to say about that <laughs> at the moment. Um, and I also added a few rounds to my Lanatus pullover out of the Shetland. No, I think the, English, it's the German title is Shetland Maschen, but I think it's the Evolution book by... What is it? Susan Crawford. And uh, I'm knitting with the, one of the new 100 Wasser colorways um, Opal sock yarn. And I still working on the yoke and I finished the pattern that I started, that I had started last week. So this motif again is finished. That's four different motifs now. I now have to do another increase round and then there's going to be another small motif so it's always a small a big one a small one a big one and um, and then I'll have, to, I'll have to try it on again to see how much how many more ra uh, rounds I need for the yoke before I can um, separate the sleeves from the front and back yeah really enjoying that as well and um, I'm quite happy I managed to do that before the sock madness pattern dropped and that's actually all the project uh, except for the knit along that I'm going to talk about at the end of the video and because there's so many things I did knit on and I did have a few more things I could talk about I'm going to introduce you to a new book that I got sent by um, Stiebner the um, publisher Stiebner 
So this is the German version. It's called Wundertüte der Strick Tricks by Patty Lyons. And the original is called Patty Lyons Knitting Bag of Tricks. And um, when I saw that they were that they there was a translation of this book, I don't know the original, so I was really interested in getting the translation to um, read about her tips and tricks. And it's very interesting. I haven't read the whole book yet, but I will do that at some point. I've um, maybe I've I've read a third of the book um, very closely, and then I've just looked at the rest of it. And there are a lot of tips and tricks in the book. So if you want, if you are starting out and there's a lot of things that you don't know yet, this might help you to get a basic understanding of how stitches work and how to do the different techniques in knitting. But even if you're an experienced knitter, there are a lot of tips and tricks how to get your knitting onto the next level. So if she starts off by explaining how a stitch is built, how knitting itself works. And there's lots of things that people aren't told when they usually, when they start knitting. Um, in the book, she says there's a conspiracy to keep this information away from people. I don't think so. A lot of the things that are in the book are things that I teach my students. So I may not be rep representative of the, of most knitters, but, um, I still think there's lots of information in the book that you don't know and that most people don't talk about. And not everybody has access to a knitting school where you can talk about things in depth. And um, there's a lot of things in the book that I already knew, but there are new things even for me as a very experienced knitter. So I do enjoy reading about the things. And um, so, as I said, some basic stuff to help you understand what's happening and how to do things but then also very specialized things to tidy things up, to get things a little better. So a lot of things that work in knitting can be done better if you know how to. And um, so if you are, maybe if you are a perfectionist or if, even if you just want to get a few things um, sorted out, or if you are interested in understanding stitches and techniques um, more in detail, then this book is for you and you can learn about as I said, basic stitches, about cast-ons, about casting off, about knitting tightly and loosely, about increases and decreases, and um, many, many things. Lots of tricks, really good book, I recommend. Um, if you are interested. So I know some people aren't interested, like my sister, she's not interested in, in the technical ins and outs of knitting. As long as it works, it's okay. If things don't work, she wants me to tell her how to do them, but she doesn't want to understand why they work the way do, they do. So this is really if you are interested and quite a few of my customers have had a look inside the book and they're really interested. So I think for many people, it's um, it's a very good book. Okay, and then just um, to let you know what I'm planning to cast on next, the, there's no, not going to be any sock madness socks uh, this week, so I can cast on something else. And um, you probably know that I get this Opal Abo, the Opal subscription, where I'm sent six different balls of yarn uh, every three months. And then in the Ravelry group for the Opal Abo, we choose one of the six colors, and that's the, the colorway for the pattern battle. That's where everybody taking part knits the same yarn, uh, the same color, but everybody has to knit a different pattern. And I'm usually very late in um, announcing the pattern that I want to knit. And this time I found it really hard to make up my mind, but I've now um, announced that I want to knit the flax sock pullover by Tin Can Knits. So, um, you know, I love Tin Can Knits patterns and the flax pullover is one of their free patterns that you can use to learn how to knit or you can use to teach knitting. So it's one of the patterns that I really like a lot. And there used to be the flax, which was um, with sock weight yarn held double and, um, or with, I think they, they call it was it weight, I don't know. And then there was the flax light where you use the fingering yarn. And now they have the flax DK, which um, in my thinking or in Opal yarn would be the six ply. And then the normal flax would be the eight ply. And this would be the what used to be the flax light, which is now called flax sock. 
of flax socks. I don't know. But I'm, I've planned to knit the flax pullover and because I only have 100 grams and I want to see how far I come with 100 grams, I've decided to knit a kit's size. Um, so not the baby sizes, but I think I am going to knit the one to two year old size. Um, and in case I run out of yarn, I'm going to use a contrast color for the ribbings. But um, we'll see. I'll just start and see how far I get. And this is the plan. So I can take part in the pattern battle and I can use up one of my subscription colorways. Okay, then that brings me to the last project, the um, Haramaki. I'm knitting in two color brioche. And again, I'm using a colorful yarn by Opal. And on the inside, on the other side, I'm using a solid color gray merino sock yarn by Hansa Farm. And I think I've added quite a bit um, to the cowl or or belly warmer or loop or whatever. And I've marked this row because from the measurement I did earlier, I was thinking of doing 160 rounds, I think. And this marks the halfway point to that. So these are 80 rounds. And then I've added like some more. <laughs> <laughs> and as I said last week, I tried it on and um, because the brioche is such a stretchy fabric, wearing it as a loop scarf, it hangs fairly open, which I think is okay so I can have some air if I'm not that cold. But because I'm planning to knit it fairly long, I can uh, sort of uh, wind it in different directions and it'll come closer to my neck. Um, so that's quite nice. It, it's quite... Um, stretchy again if I pull it over my head so it will hang open. I can leave it that way or I can fold it round to get it a bit closer. And I tried it on as a belly warmer and it's no problem for me to fit inside. And um, But if I wear it around my hips of course it gets stretched out a lot more so it's a bit shorter. So as a either like a belly warmer or a mini skirt I will have to add quite a bit of length and also because it's so stretchy it'll be too wide around my waist. It fits around my hips but it's too wide for the waist and um, and actually it's wide enough to be pulled, pulled over my shoulders. It'll be a bit tight but I can pull it down but I was thinking in order to um, have it still a bit closer to my neck without having to, to wrap it around too much. Um, and also for my waist, it would be nice to have one side a bit um, that I can sort of pull in. So my idea now is to um, knit the height that I want and then put in one round of um, like an eyelet pattern or with little holes so I can crochet or knit, I don't know yet, um, um, like a string that I can pull through and then I can pull it tight around my neck or I can pull it tight around my waist and that would make it um, easier for me to wear this the way I like and also if I pull it around my head I could pull it tight and it would sit around my face a bit tighter if it's really cold in winter. So that's the idea that I had. Um, I've done that with a black alpaca loop cow that my sister knit for me and there I put beads into that string and also into the edge of uh, the other edge of the cowl so there's no beads here yet so I was thinking of adding them afterwards I don't know um, maybe I won't do beads I don't know yet but that's the plan for now to give it quite a bit more length than do um, a round with with an eyelet pattern or with holes and then pull a string through that's the idea. Yeah, so that's everything I knit and crocheted last week. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!